Okay, right now we're going to demonstrate the pop proper application of the KED. We are going to simulate that the patient has just been involved in a car accident and we're unable to have services available to, to able to extricate him. So first, Paul will come up and, ta and take manual C-spine. Marcus will follow and properly place the C-collar on. How you doing, sir? Okay. I'm going to put the C-collar on you and make sure you uh, keep your spine in place. We'll get any further injuries. Uh, three. Now because the patient uh, hasn't been secured yet to a spinal board or the cat, even with the collar on, remember we're still going to hold manual C-spine through this process. So next they will come with their device. Go ahead and move forward. Okay, on my count. We're going to move him forward approximately six inches. One. Two, three. Person at the head always is in charge of calling the shots. And before they put this on, they're going to palpate the spine real quick to make sure they don't feel any deficits or any kind of crepitus instability, DCAP, BTLS. Pulling the hip straps off first before you place it on can save you a lot of trouble and get them out of the way before you place the KED on someone. Oftentimes in placing the KED, especially on someone wearing a belt, the KED will get stuck uh, on the belt, causing you to think that it's actually at the bottom of the seat or the base of where the patient is, which is where it needs to be. So carefully, without moving the patient too much, they're going to do, do their best to shimmy it down to the bottom. We done? I'm gonna lean back into the cat on my count. One, two, three. Okay, so now we'll start from top to bottom with the green strap and pull it all through pull it all the way across. And they're going to use a cross-threading technique so not to shift the patient's spine as they tighten this down. They're just tightening it so it's snug and they're going to move on to the next one. And you'll see too as they move down to the straps we get, we get a long tail from the end of the clip before so the best thing to do with that is just like Lewis did is let that hang down and get trapped between the other straps so it won't be in the way later. Now with the three straps done, they're going to move to the harder portion of this, is to apply the black hip straps. And to do this, they're going to have to work it under the patient's thigh and up into the crotch area. The reason for this is the reason for this is because this is going to create a seat for them so they can lift the patient up. As Marcus is demonstrating right now, these straps are good and snug, almost like a rock climbing harness. And the same care will be taken too to tighten these straps down. And 
fairly snug without causing the patient too much discomfort. Now with that strap down, they're going to go back and reassess their torso straps because as you can see, there's quite a bit of space between there. Lewis is going to use the cross-threading method again after telling the patient to take a deep breath. Deep breath. And he's going to make it tight enough so he can squeeze two fingers in between. Okay, and he'll, he'll continue that with the, the other two straps. Deep breath. Now we're going to put the straps on so the, uh, the head is immobilized to the Kent device. As you can see, Lewis is starting, he's putting the forehead strap on first. He's starting low below the ear and Marcus is coming across the top and putting it low again. This is promoting the patient's head to stay back in the immobilized position and not move. To put the chin strap on, he'll do the exact opposite, forming an X along the Velcro side of the, of the Ked going under the chin and back up over the ear. At this, at this point, before doing anything else, it would be important to re reassess CSMTP as it, as it would have been uh, during an assessment of doing this. And from here, now the patient is ready to be extricated from the car onto a board using the hand strap. So next, to move the patient from a seated position to a supine position, there's multiple handholds on the KED device. There's two handholds uh, just under where the shoulder is and one handhold uh, behind the head. Using this, Marcus and Luis will come and with one hand they'll grab the handholds along the side. With their other hand, they will go under his leg and help, su and help support the moving. Paul will grab the... Uh, grab the head strap, and because he was originally holding C-spine, he will call the shots for uh, moving him. Ready to move? Ready. On my count. One, two, three. Without Lewis and Marcus holding his legs like that, this would cause a great deal of pain for the patient. Move him down the board. One, two, three. As you can see, even though he's laying down, they're still going to hold onto his legs until they release the two black straps. And as they do this, they'll lay the patient's legs flat on the spine board, and they'll continue C-spine while the patient remains in the KED device. <laughs> 